Grace and peace and spoiler alert. My name is Ryan. I'm the movie pastor and I'm watching Netflix movies because I can't go to the theater right now. Actually, this one was on Hulu. It uh, was recommended to me by the alumni office of Austin Seminary to check out the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. I am an alumnus of Austin Seminary. If you go there and you would like to attend Austin Seminary and you mention that I sent you using code name MoviePass, they will take you for a free lunch at the Kirby Lane Cafe featured in the movie Boyhood. That's uh, not something that I actually confirmed and set up with them, but they buy everybody lunches if they want to go to the seminary, and I feel like that's probably true. I don't know. I'm, is that not true? It's probably true. Give it a try. It's, it, it'll work out. Anyway, the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. That's a movie about books uh, and how books are interpreted and how books have the capacity to transform us and even to save us. That already is a subject that's really close to my heart um, because of my wife. You can see her there. She has spent her career teaching kids how to read, and especially working with kids who speak other languages, Spanish and Chinese, to, to know and speak English and to read in English. So she's a massive bibliophile who looks down upon me sometimes for my preference for movies and audiobooks, which she, you know, she says if you read an audiobook, that's not really reading. Anyway, I'd leave a comment about that debate. But the, the question of books and how to engage books is such a fascinating and important question that is tied deeply to my life with one particular book, the Bible. In the movie, a group of people on the island of Guernsey under Nazi occupation find rescue and solace in reading and they build a community around that reading and then years later uh, Lily James who's pretty much a walking Disney princess interacts with them and uh, wants to engage in their community and people fall in love all the standard movie stuff what's interesting about the film and what's unique about the film is its engagement with classic literature in the midst of what is a pretty familiar story. And so we have discussions about how we interpret Anne Brant and uh, people reading from the importance of being earnest all in the midst of what would otherwise be a standard story that challenges us to ask the same questions I'm always asking which is what is this text saying, what does it mean, and what is it challenging us to do about it. And one of these texts, one of these books that transforms the people in their reading is the Bible. There is a character who is not a part of the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society, but who runs a bed and breakfast in town who loves the Bible. And there, there's even a scene where she just kind of arranges the Bible very carefully and like, I'm going to put this here where it can influence you. Um, and Lily James eventually, uh, through a, a series of encounters where she just kind of shows herself to be an uppity, unlikable person, Lily James says, this is a book filled with love and you've ignored all of it in favor of judgmentalism. I, you say you're going to pray for me, but I will pray for you. And, and so, so the question that is raised is, how do we interpret books and how do we interpret the Bible? If you can read Anne Brant and find feminism in it, it's a rather old book. It's got some limited ideas about women, but it's also got some progressive ideas about women. Then what about the Bible? And can we be careful in our reading? And can we have discussions about it? And if we are not, and, and what we get out of the Bible instead is, is something that, that judges and something that makes us nasty or something that makes us backwards and regressive and traditionalistic and hurtful, is that really the Bible doing that? Or could it be us? Could it be the way 
we're choosing to read. I think that's a really, really important message, and it's a message that I deeply relate to. I think that I think that a lot of the trouble people have relating to the scriptures and appreciating and engaging the Bible comes from this this anti-reading perspective, this belief that we we somehow shouldn't be interpreting it, um, and and we should just like let it lie there and 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 call that interpreting it literally. Um, which there's really no such thing. There's just interpreting it carefully or interpreting it according to my prejudices, according to <laughs> my, my immediate biases. But what good literature does, what all sorts of good literature does, the Bible included, is challenge prejudices and, and cause us to have thoughts that we didn't have before we read it. And it's, it's those thoughts that we need to really pay attention to. And so if we can be taught to read well, to read closely, to read carefully, and if we can engage with different readers in community, um, readers who read differently, if we can do the sorts of things that I did at Austin Seminary, we can develop a different kind of relationship with the Bible and indeed a different kind of relationship with one another. And Sing